And if you don't have the understanding of why and how and what the Holy Spirit is, oftentimes we just avoid it. We just stay away from the conversation altogether because I don't got enough knowledge to argue with you. And unfortunately, a lot of people have better knowledge of their error than many of us who have the truth. And I'm not here to dis- discount anybody. Believe me, I'm not here to argue one is right or one is wrong. I'm here to teach you who are here today, who God sent you here to know and to understand that there is a multiple working of the Holy Spirit every day in our life. Amen. And so I want to just take a moment to clarify, go back and, and to just broaden my, my message from last week on this. So if you got your Bibles, open it to John. John chapter 14, verse 14 and 16. Jesus speaking says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Now focus on this last verse of 17. He dwells with you and will be in you. Being a born again person, person is not just some experience you had once in your life rather that moment of new birth is a receiving of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit he will now dwell in you when you made Jesus the Lord of your life Jesus here is telling us there will be an indwelling of the Holy Spirit a moment when the Holy Spirit will come into your life And we went into this a little bit last week. When he comes in, what does he do? He regenerates. He makes a spirit that is dead to God, separated from God. He makes him alive in Christ. A new creature. Old things. Who you were separated from God has passed away. All things have become new. How? I have the same flesh. I have the same mind. I have the same focus. But yet I'm alive on the inside. The Holy Spirit comes to work in us. A divine personality comes to make his home in our life. There's no need for any believer at the moment of salvation to ever feel comfortless again. To ever be bereaved or forlorn. A comforter comes to live. And we spent a few weeks ago breaking down what that comforter is. Counselor, advocate, uh, intercessor. And we spoke about each one of those uh, purposes or personalities of the Holy Spirit that the, new, the King James calls comforter. And then again, we also know and understand that when we are born again, the comforter comes, the revealer comes, the enabler comes. But here's another thing that comes. The fruit of the Spirit comes. What's that? Not the gifts, the fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, long-suffering. These fruits come because the Holy Spirit lives within me. I am able to endure. I am able to love. I am able to see a long-suffering come into my life that was not previously there before the new birth. These are all parts of the working of the new birth, salvation experience. Christ's purpose in sending the Holy Spirit was so that this divine personality could come and live in us. And that happens when you make Jesus the Lord of your life. The New Testament actually gives us three relations that God sustains with all mankind. First, there is God for us. Second, there is God with us. And third, there is God in us. God has a relationship with man in three ways. For us, with us, and in us. Romans 8.31 says, if God be for us, Who can be against us? We certainly hold on that scripture a lot of times in life. When the world comes against us, problems and adversities, we draw upon the strength of that God is for us. Everybody else can be against us, but God is for me. If God's on my side, then certainly we're going to win at life. If God is for me, and I know that he is for me, then why am I in fear? Why am I full of anxiety? If God's for me, is this thing greater than God? Certainly not. We have an assurance that not only is God for us, but in every place in life, in every situation of life, God is also with us. 
Not only is he on our side, he's with you on your side. He's not like on your side from afar. Like we're for you, good luck with that. That's not how for us is. It's also a with us. Not only is he on your side, he's in the game on your side. He's on your team, are you hearing me? It's not God bringing this down to test you. What kind of teamwork is that? How could a God be for us and with us if he's the problem? How can we blame him as the source of our sickness as he's for me and he's with me? No matter what the circumstance may be in life, if you are a Christian, if you have made Jesus your Lord, then he is with you and he is for you. And see, we see under the Old Covenant, under the Old Testament, we see God for the nation of Israel. We see God with Israel, but we never see God in Israel. There was no capacity for God to be in mankind before Jesus because sin had not been paid for. The very separator that kept God from being in us had not been dealt with. So all God could be throughout the Old Testament was for and with, but he could not be in. And then the New Testament shows up. What's that mean? That means Jesus. Jesus coming and fulfilling the law. The thing, the only thing that man could do to allow God to ever be in them, which no man could do, Jesus came and did. And by doing so, he finished and established the Old Testament. And when he rose from the dead, the New Testament, a new covenant, a new relationship with man was born. That's why in the, in the temple, when Jesus died, they, they talk about how the veil was torn. In the temple, there was a heavy curtain, about 20 feet high, 30 feet wide, about 4 inches thick. And it went from the top and the bottom. And behind that curtain was what was called the Holy of Holies. And that's where the Holy Spirit resided. And when Jesus died, it says it was tore from the top to the bottom. Some guy didn't go in there and rip it for the Holy The Holy Spirit left the temple. The veil was torn. What was that? The separator. The thing that kept the Holy Spirit from us. It was removed by the death of Christ. And when he rose again, he created an environment, an opportunity, a relationship, a testament that was new. Built on better promises than the old. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 tells us that we are now the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and you are not your own. I don't want those tongues, oh, but you, then you don't want the Holy Ghost. Because here he says he's of God. The Holy Spirit who is in you from God, you don't want? No, no, I just don't want those tongue things. All right, well then get over your tongue thing and get the Holy Ghost. And then I'll show you why the tongues thing is so valuable in a minute. But let's just agree, the Holy Spirit lives in us, and He is from God. And the Holy Spirit, let's agree, that the, Jesus said He will be with us forever in John, right? So the Holy Spirit will be given to live in us by God, and as Jesus said, forever. This is important. One of the mighty truths in connection with our redemption is this apex of reality in that moment where Jesus died and rose again. Redemption has now been paid for. We have now been able to access a redemptive life, redeemed from the old ways. After the Holy Spirit recreates us, regenerates our spirit man, makes us new creatures in Christ, then He, that person of the Holy Spirit, makes our body, which that new spirit is in, His home. So you want to know where the Holy Spirit is? He's in sons and daughters of God. 1 Corinthians 3.16 in the Amplified. Do you not discern and understand that the whole church at Corinth are God's temple, His sanctuary, and that God's Spirit has His, 
has his permanent, what's that word? Dwelling in you. To be at home in you collectively as a church and also individually. This is talking about the Holy Spirit at salvation. He dwells in you at the new birth. Nobody in this church, leadership-wise, let me say that because I can't speak for you. But we as a church do not argue that the Holy Spirit is part of the new birth. He has absolutely come into your life when you made Jesus your Lord. He dwells in you. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives within you, whom you have received as a gift from God? You are not your own. Salvation makes you no longer all about you. When you made Jesus your Lord, guess what? You got a companion. 2 Corinthians 6, 16 in the Amplified what agreement can there be between a temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Even as God said, I will dwell in and with and among them. And will walk in them and with and among them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Salvation is what these scriptures are talking about. This is not talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but the salvation experience that the Holy Spirit dwells, He is of God, He is from God, and He will stay with you forever. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you click like and subscribe to this channel so you can catch all our videos and live streams. Hey, why don't you share one of these videos with your friends? And remember, you can catch me live every Sunday morning and Wednesday evening. Thanks for watching. This is our finest hour to set men free.